The Birds is coming. My follow-up to Psycho. It's got to be bigger, better, scarier. My most ambitious movie ever. And we want you to star in it. Every actress on the planet wants to play Melanie Daniels. Ah, well, we don't want them. We want you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, no one ever believed in me that much before. <laughs> Where's my hanky? <laughs> Now look, you've got it done. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Peter Travers. This is Popcorn, where we tell you what's going on in pop culture, movies, television, everything else. And you have just seen a scene from HBO's The Girl. And you've seen Sienna Miller playing Tippi Hedren making The Birds with Alfred Hitchcock. And because we're great and kind to you, we have brought Sienna Miller herself here today looking nothing like Tippi Hedren. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. It took a lot of time and makeup to get me there, I have no, to say. I don't, I'm not believing any oh, of this no, to do did, I did. Did. But I think we have to start by just asking you to say, what is this? What exactly is this movie which is so much about the making of this movie and a little bit of Marnie, which she did for Hitchcock later? It's kind of a study of of Hitchcock and Tippi Hedren and the relationship that went on behind the scenes. Um, she was a model. She was she was kind of plucked out of obscurity by this great, legendary, iconic, fantastic filmmaker, and he kind of molded her into his ideal blonde. Um, taught her how to act, and gave her the roles, these incredible roles, and then gradually became more and more obsessed with his creation and. Um, and this film kind of is the study of that obsession. Well, it's the obsession <laughs> takes sometimes the form of being abusive, yeah. sadistic, yeah. all these kinds of things. Because yeah. I think people in America, even if they weren't around when Hitchcock had his TV show where he would introduce the Which she moments. was originally on. Yes, yes, yes. It was, he's funny, yeah. you know? Yeah. And the idea that there can be this bit of a monster in somebody yeah. who is also this gifted filmmaker, yeah. as well as anything else, is what the scary part of it is. Isn't it's it? really, it's fascinating. And then you go back and you revisit a lot of his work and you, you kind of realize that all the signs are there. You know, particularly at the end of Marnie, um, Tippi's character of Marnie is, is almost rescued by the Sean Connery character. And you're supposed to feel a sense of relief that this man has rescued her. And then you remember that he raped her, mm -hmm. you know? And there's this theme, this quite misogynistic <laughs> theme in Hitchcock's work that that kind of alludes to this aspect of his personality. And, but yeah, all I'd ever known about him was that he was very funny and obviously talented. Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> but then when you see this, when you watch The Girl, which Hitchcock always called the female leads yeah. of his movies, right? The These women were the girl. Yeah. Right? You do a good Hitchcock. Thank you. Too. Well, I was after that role. <laughs> so, but, yeah, something went Toby wrong. Toby Jones stole that I know. Me. He was originally going to play Tippy, and so... <laughs> and he could have been so good. I know. He would have been great. I would have been a better Hitchcock. <laughs> But what, what's freaking me out when I watch it as I'm like a major Hitchcock obsessive yeah. is the sadism of this, the, especially the scene where Tippi Hedren's character goes to the attic where the birds are going to be there, Yeah. where you're told what, you're, Tippi is told by... That they would have Hitchcock. mechanical birds yeah. <clears throat> and it would be a day filming and, and then I think the seconds before she was called on set she was told that they would not be using mechanical birds, that there had been some problem. But obviously, in order to get however many live birds they needed for the scene, this had been in, the, in you know, planned for months. Mm -hmm. And she wasn't told, and she walks on set, and there are men with leather gauntlets up to here and masks on their faces, and she's this vulnerable woman in an attic, and she endured five days of having live birds thrown at her face and her body and fighting off live birds. I think one very narrowly missed her eye with its claw. And, you know, she, she did this, and it's an incredible scene, and it definitely the kind of, the fear really resonates in it, mm -hmm. but 
It was genuine fear. I did it for an hour. I had live birds thrown at me for an hour, and I can tell you it's not something that I would want to endure for any any more significant Great. amount of so time. So you only, for your art, had to be tortured yeah. for one Just hour as opposed one to five hour. days. With, yeah, it was brutal. The, the sexual kind of sadism and abuse, we see it in this movie, um, in the backseat of the limousine. Yeah. It's like suddenly the great director, the avuncular man, is jumping in. Yeah. In this. Um, we see uh, Melda Staunton playing Alma Hitchcock, his wife. Yeah. And um, we, we're seeing her being semi-aware that this is going on. Yeah. But Tippy has a line where she's saying to somebody, I've had, I'm a model. It's not like I haven't had men mm -hmm. come on to me before. I can handle that. Yeah. But in this case, but this was she different. couldn't quite handle it. Yeah. I think it was more sinister. And I think the power that he had as a man and this kind of court around him of sycophants, because mm -hmm. he was Alfred Hitchcock and he was everyone's meal ticket and he was making mm -hmm. incredible films, churning out television. You know, he was so powerful. And, and I think what makes this more sinister is that everybody on the set was aware that this was happening and nobody did anything. Mm -hmm. And she felt she was gradually kind of ostracized and isolated and left alone with this, with this behavior that everybody was somehow ignoring. Um, and it was different because he was, you know, the master of suspense and this kind of sinister, you know, he knew how to manipulate and according to this is, you know, the stories that we've heard. And I just think it was, it was very subtle and, and quite hard to pinpoint exactly what was going on, except it was these looks that were just, you know, it was, it was, it was a difficult thing to articulate. It's eerie because we see him in the chair, very quiet, mm -hmm. you know, just watching this with no expression. And there's also a scene in the beginning where he's basically coaching Tippi Hedren yeah. in this and saying, don't worry about what you're, I don't want any expression. Yeah. I'm going to cut Do this together. Yeah. yeah. I'll cut this together and yeah. make it happen. Well, she's so complimentary, understandably, about him as a director mm -hmm. and is in a huge awe of the learning that, you know, the lessons that he taught her and he taught her how to act mm -hmm. and what an incredible place to learn. Um, and, and yeah, that, that kind of do-nothing thing on film, it really works. I think she was probably going in with a lot more enthusiasm than, than is necessary if you're shooting this close. Well, I but think... But I love that scene. I love the idea of that oh. dynamic of her learning how to act from this great man. Mm -hmm. And also her being a model, coming yeah. into this without any acting experience at all yeah. and doing this. Yeah. But you can relate to that in some ways, can't you? You start it. As a mom. I did, but I wasn't a very good one. I mean, oh, well, I was... Okay. I was if, as long as you're a bad mom. I mean, mom. I dabbled. I yeah. dabbled, but I couldn't ever say, you know, I'm mm -hmm. quite short. And, and I think I was... You're quite short. I no, was booked to be like the, the funny one on the set that would you're bring the tall me, one. I'm I, I, I had very me. big shoes These on. These are I'm, big shoes <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I did a little bit, but acting was always what I wanted to do and, mm -hmm. and had done a lot of theatre and... Um, so that was always the world that I operated in. And the modelling was kind of a meal ticket at the time. But I, I never was just solely that. I was always acting as well. So you've learned to handle yourself, though, as well in doing that with this world of men who might be uh, exploitative <laughs> in terms of what's happening? I mean, it's a different world, thankfully. Mm -hmm. I think in the 60s, it was very hard for a woman to achieve anything without the support of a man. And mm -hmm. therefore, women, you know, were very reliant upon men for everything. And I think, thankfully, things have changed and women can be self-sufficient. So we're useless. You could basically so yeah, just basically, kick me out of here now and just do redundant this. You know, this point. Oh, really? What yeah. am I here for? Yeah. I'm just Frankly, I'm just going <laughs> to take over, guys. Um, yeah. So. And I just auditioned, but was auditioning for great stuff, so I never encountered sleazy directors, you know. What a shame. Unfortunately, yeah, really? I missed out on that whole kind because of I don't the know. seedy side of Hollywood. I wish I, yeah.